What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode here on the Mike Falapi YouTube channel. And today, got a little bit of an exploration video here for you guys. We're at Mingo Creek County Park in Washington County, Pennsylvania today. And we're going to be taking a walk up what I like to call, what I, what I assume the name of the road is, the Old Fire Road. Now, I, I have no idea if that's on paper anywhere legally that's what it's been called in circles i've been in for years just the fire road the old fire road but there's some secrets along this road that i want to share with you guys some cool things that i want to show you um some abandoned stuff that not too many people know about and that you know i want to bring to light today by making this video this is going to be the first video in a series of a couple different places around this park that people don't know about too much i mean you could walk the paved trail or bike the paved trail like i did in the last video here at mingo which was six months ago now seven months ago now i don't even remember how long ago that video was six or seven months a lot of things have changed in six or seven months but we're here today in the middle of winter. <laughs> it's technically, if you want to get technical about it, I guess it's not really the middle of winter yet, but it, it's January when we're out here right now. So that's enough talking. By the way, drink of the day, the new Mountain Dew Pitch Black. Well, I guess it's not new because it came out before. If you like grape, I suggest you go out and try some. Anyway, that's enough talking on here with you guys. I want to get out and start showing you the fire road, and we're going to do this video, and it's going to be cool. So, be back with you in a few minutes up on the fire road. What we have here is the Mingo Creek County Park map, and what we're looking at today is this road here that runs down this way and then ends here on what's called Park View Road. We're starting on Park View Road. Generally, I like to start here on what's known as Mansion Hill Road, but for various reasons, I decided to walk down the trail before starting the video and start at this side. So we're going to be walking up here and going down the length of this, and I'll talk about some stuff that... um. I'll talk about different things that we see, and that's about it. Um, I don't have any real history as to why this is the way it is. Um, you'll see some things that I'll show you, but I couldn't find any information. Um, there's going to be two more parts to this series, one where we talk about what's called the August Stony Road and one where we talk about what's called the Frog Pond Road, which that Frog Pond Road is also called Ebenezer Bridge Road, and that pond has a name, but we'll, we'll talk about that in that video. I have history on some of that stuff, but I haven't been able to find that much history on this. Apparently, there was a farm up in those woods somewhere that was owned by some guy who was a railroad worker or something, and he owned a farm up there on what is called the Fire Road. I don't know what the name of that road is. It, that's one thing I don't know. But I that road, it, it would have originally been, you know, its own kind of deal. It wouldn't have been a fire road. It wasn't named a fire road until after everything that happened. But um, it's probably not the best thing to have as the first video in the series. But, you know, that's the way I think it feels most appropriate to do it, to start from there. But I just, I don't have a lot of answers about that. And that's one thing I wish I did. Um, I know that that land was taken via eminent domain, but I just, there's so many questions that, um you know, I, I tend to have, and there's no real answers for any of that out there. No one seems to know what a lot of the a lot of the deals are with that but anyway that's enough rambling about that um we'll get you guys out there we'll show you guys what's going on and that's about it for that guys so let's get to it i guess something i can show you right now to kill a little bit of time is the henry house now if you don't know anything about local history of mingo park henry's owned a good bit of land um i believe they owned 
most of this land you see here and possibly all the way down the hill to the creek. I'm not 100% sure. There's a lot of history on it if you look deep enough, but not a lot of history according to some things. Um, you could attempt to read some of this. Um, there's some good information there. Um, obviously, you see 304 acres. Whiskey Rebellion, if you don't know, Whiskey Rebellion happened in this area, obviously. And, yeah, so this house was dedicated in 95, and there's all this information here. But anyway, they redid this house a few years ago. Um, it was boarded up and everything. And now I think you could rent it or they might do tours or something. And there's this nice big deck back here. But yeah, um, I believe that this house and at least this property here was taken legally. Well, I mean, the rest of the land, I guess, was taken legally. But I believe this land here was donated. Um... And I'll talk about it more in other videos, but some pretty shifty things happened in Washington County, Pennsylvania to make this park what it is today. Um, I believe here, um, it doesn't say on the plaque, but I'm pretty sure that the family donated this land and the house, I think. Don't hold me to that. But a lot of the land in this park was taken by eminent domain. Um where they were basically offering people pennies on the dollar for their property or they were going to go to court and get it. But I'll talk more about that in another video because I know for a fact a little bit more about that land. Um, but some of the things I'm going to show you up on the fire road off in the distance over there, I'm not sure if they were Henry's property, part of their farm, or if some of that stuff belonged to another farm, because I'm not quite sure what part of this land they actually farmed. I know for a fact where there's some remnants up in the hills that I'm going to show you, but as for what's down here, if there was any farming down here, what exactly was where, I don't know. But there's tons of land over here, pavilions and all kind of stuff. Um, very nice park as you saw in my other video. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead. Um, the fire road starts right over here. I guess we can take a walk over to where it starts. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to walk the entire length of the road all the way up to where it starts on the other side, and I'm going to complete the video by walking back rather than walk all the way out and have to walk back because I think um, the progression of events... It's a little bit, makes a little bit more sense walking from the, um, what I would assume, I believe, would be walking from the western side back to this more so eastern side, or might run north to south. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm not a geography major. By any sense of the word, I am a mechanic, as you guys know. And I guess the extent of my geography skills ends with Google Maps. But, yeah. I'll take a walk and show you the portal down here. They're pretty visibly marked. Um, the sign over here, this is vehicles prohibited. Fun story, I wanted to take a picture of my truck parked right in front of that sign. Um, back in the day, well, back in the day is in a week ago, but I've seen people park here before. They just don't want you driving up the hill because you feasibly can, but they don't want you to. Anyway, we've reached the portal here. As you can see, do not enter authorized vehicles only. You're more than welcome to walk up this trail. In fact, that's what 90% of people do. But um, I will talk in the end of the video 
about why exactly there is a gate here and why you can drive up here. Um, this has been paved. But when we start at the other end, that was newly paved. But this part, this lower half of this trail has been paved for, I don't know, at least the last 20 years, if not longer, I think. Um, maybe less, but at least the last 15. But anyway, like I said, I'm going to walk all the way down the trail to where it begins. And then we're going to start there just because I think the flow of events makes a little bit more sense. Hey guys, we're back now. As you can see, there's the gate at the other end. Um, if I zoom in a little bit down there, the road that is heading straight would be Mingo Creek Road, I suppose, and you can see it runs through the trees down there. And that road that goes to the right is Parkview Drive or Parkview Road, anyway. I didn't feel like walking down this hill and then all the way back up, so I chose not to. So we're gonna be heading in this direction behind me. But anyway, you can see the gate, the sign that you can't see, you'll see multiple of as we go along the road. And they all basically just say no horses and no motor vehicles. Um, there's tons of horse trails in this park, all very nice trails, but, can't ride horses on this road for whatever reason now like i said they paved this road i believe summer of 2020 or summer of 2021 i'm pretty sure it was the summer of 2021 or the spring of 2021 it might have been the spring of 2021 because i'm pretty sure that i walked on this in winter of 2020 something like that and then when i came here in the summer of 2021 i was like oh my gosh they paved it now this road used to be a mixture of red dog and gravel, but obviously they paved it now. I went ahead and stepped off the road now. Um, basically the road kind of just winds along this hill. Um, I believe at one point this road was probably licensed or not uh, inhabited a road that had multiple different farms. I don't think it just went through and had one four minute, but I've never seen any documentation or anything either way. Now here we have our first kind of cool thing that I want to go and look at here. Now I've known that this building was up here for quite a while, but like I said, they don't plow this in the summer. Well, not plow, but yeah, they don't, yeah, plow. They don't plow the fields. They don't cut the hay down. So you really can't get up to this except for in the winter. There's some deer over here. You can kind of see, but we're not bothering them any. But anyway, I've heard different stories about what exactly this is up here, whether it be a barn or a house or no one really seems to know. There's a lot of information that, um, the Washington County has not shared. Um, I'm going to say it's a barn. If you look here, that looks to be a rear end off a tractor or some kind of a some kind of a cart towed behind a tractor. That's definitely a part of a tractor. But anyway, so this is just up here. Now, like I said, I'm not too sure about who owned this or why it was here. Um, but for some reason, they didn't take it out of here. Um, the majority of the buildings around this park that were former farm buildings or whatever have been long torn down. There were multiple farms up here at Mingo. Um, not just one or two. There were, there were multiple um, along multiple different of these roads that are just like this one where they put a gate along the road and, well, they just left them there. There's two more that we're going to look at during this series, at least, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Like I said, I've never walked up around here before, so I'm not too sure 
But yeah, it's an abandoned barn of some kind. <laughs> I believe it to be a barn. I've heard it called different things. Barn, house, whatever, what have you. But... There's a tin roof. Still there. Up in the woods. Behind this old barn. That's really cool that the rear end of that tractor is still down there. I assume that's a tractor rear end. I don't know where this stops being grass and starts being roof. Because a lot of old barns were dug into the hillside. But yeah really sick like I said I've never been up here before but obviously this is a trail and it looks like it's been ridden on I'm also not sure at what point this stops being park property at what point this starts being private property so I don't really want to go up in here um, there's nothing up there to see anyway but yeah it's really cool I'm not gonna go delving into that um, but yeah, it interests me as to why the park didn't go ahead and tear this down. Like I said, there were multiple farms here on the Mingo property. Most of which, I, like I said, were taken by eminent domain. But they left this one intact. We'll go up here, take a look at some things, I guess. like some old hydraulics and shocks of some kind I don't know what that would have done that's what it looks like there's the window here but yeah it's really cool Look at that old school stone work just left a rot here no as I said I don't know the story as to why this is like this I mean, it could have been abandoned long before Mingo did what they did, but someone graffitied into it, if you can see. But yeah, it's really cool. But anyway, I wonder how old this bottle is. Eh, it's fairly old. It's got the old Gatorade logo in it, so. Earliest would have had to have been early 2000s, I'm guessing. Early to mid. How do I get into here? But anyway, that's pretty cool. And like I said, none of this is trespassing. This is all on park property, as far as I know. But for whatever reason, they decided to leave it here. Obviously, it's quite a bit overgrown. You can see barrels and cinder blocks and smashed up cans. What would that have been? It's like a Miller High Life can. Doesn't look too recent, but old school V8 can. Who knows how long this stuff's been here, whether it's original or whether some good old fashioned hooligans came up in here causing trouble. As we like to do in abandoned buildings, I myself, being one of them back in the olden days. But yeah, all the old walls and everything's still up here. And what looks like the rear end out of some old fashioned farm implement. Who knows what's lying underneath the fallen roof. There could be who knows what up in there, but that's really sick. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and move on now and take you and show you some more cool stuff along this road. But this really is the pinnacle up here. An old barn on old farmland in the middle of a public park. I apologize for the footage being such stop and go, but you see, I filmed this video once before when it was like, I don't know, 90 something degrees. And there was not a single person out here. But for some reason, even though it's like 30, 
a lot of people out here today. But anyway, we'll continue. You can see there's some stuff blocking off a road that used to be out here. Then you come down over here. You might see this over here. What looks to be a farmer's spring house, if I had to guess. But I'm not super, you know, knowledgeable on old style traditions, but that's what this looks like. You have what kind of looks like a rock formation here leading back to this opening back here. If I could stand on this rock, you'll see. That indeed does look like it was some form of an opening to a spring house. Now, whether or not it's connected to the farm up the hill, I don't know or not, but it's what it appears like. There's still water flowing down to a drain over that way, but it's pretty cool that this is still out here. They were pretty selective in what they decided to leave and what they decided to tear down. Granted, you can't really tear this out. It's built into the hillside, but it's cool that it's still here. Now, whether or not this was its own thing or there used to be more out here, I, I don't really know. You know, the um, geography of the land's not super well documented into the history of, you know, who owned what and why and how it was acquired, but it's still there, I guess. So, you know, it is what it is. I'd love to find a documented history as to why everything is the way that it is, but I don't know. The government, the, the county government wasn't too good about that, so all we're left with is what we can see. It's pretty cool, but not super well documented. But it's a lot nicer out here than it was in the summer when I did this video. Because you can get right up in here and get a better look at what's going on. Um, but yeah. What I assume was an opening to a spring house or some kind of opening to a basement. But I'm, I'm leaning towards spring house of some kind. But yeah. pretty cool. Now, I will say I don't really necessarily like blazing trails through the park but in order to get to things like that sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And like I said I assume this is an opening here that was blocked off. Um, I'm assuming this was some sort of either a farm field or a driveway to someone's house up in this field. Um, there's a couple of these old fields the one a little bit farther down, I'll show you that sign is the sign that I was talking about earlier at the front gate. <sighs> but there's a lot of random fields around here, which is leads to my suspicion that either it was one or two bigger farms or multiple little pieces of property out here along this road. Um, I'll try to get you a little bit of footage here, just of what the topography is like walking on this road. I'm not quite sure the length of it. Obviously, it's not a straight shot. So if you want to come visit this, which you can, it's here. It's not like I'm showing you some illegal property. But it's a little bit of up and down. So obviously, the, there's two big hills at each end. Then it kind of levels off for a while. But there you can see more field going on over there. So here you can see down to the woods at the main walking trail and the main road down there more field and also you can kind of see the sidling tower i think is down there through those woods i'm not 100 percent sure but yeah it's a pretty cool road up here it's kind of like a paved road to nowhere i'm not 100 percent sure why the county came in here after i don't know thinking they took this land i know a couple of the other roads are mid 70s this might have been earlier i'm not 100 percent sure but 
why they decided to pave it after all this time. But they did. I have two theories as to why they might have paved it. One, you know, they had the money through grants and they wanted to make it easier for themselves to come up here and plow the fields, which, oddly enough, after paving the summer after they paved it, they didn't actually bring their equipment up here and pave it that summer. They didn't come up here and not pave it. They, they didn't come up here and plow it that summer. Um, but that's one option. The other option is, I don't know if the markings are still up here at all, but um, they do um, run cross-country through here in the summer. So maybe they did that to make it nicer for them. But then again, you know, I don't know. I mean, the whole point of cross-country is supposed to be going all terrain. But then again, I mean, it wasn't a very good terrain up here. You know, there were a lot of rocks and s chunks of trees sticking up out of the road and you know, obviously, if you fall over that, you're going to break an ankle or something. But my first experience with this road was we would hike up here with the scouts back before they paved it. We would, we would camp up over the hill from all of this near where the observatory is. But maybe I'll take you up there in another video or at the end of this video or something and show you that because it's really cool up there actually as well so we'll see what's going on maybe we'll go over there as you can see they painted on the road bed here ms 3k that way which i'm assuming means middle school 3k because i'm pretty sure as you can see ms 3k but i'm pretty sure the high schools would go down through here and run down the hill and then come back up the other side versus the middle school they wanted to just head straight off the trail this way i'm assuming this used to be a farm field because it's still you can still kind of see it the way it was grooved over the years it's a certain topography that no many how many cycles you don't really use your field it just you, you could tell gives me farm but this here is a portal to the yellow trail it's another one of the trails that cuts through the park and i'll kind of realize that that's why they have these no horses signs because there's a trail crossing the yellow trail you can ride horses on this road you can't but that, i guess that makes sense i never really thought about it like that even though i walk on this road all the time you also see there's a little cut through the woods here and this gravel meets up you can go in behind here There's back where we parked and the pavilion is you could take a shortcut across the field rather than walking up the steep hill it's the last thing that i want to show you guys before we go ahead and end the video off here today the final thing i want to show on today's video here is this at the top of the final hill we have the Washington County Model Aviation Association's airfield. Now, you can kind of see here, this road was paved to about here or so down to the hill where we parked so they could get up in here with their vehicles. And then right in here, probably right about where this line is, this is the new part they paved. So this all used to be Red Dog from here down and this has been paved forever. I'm not gonna go too far out into the airfield. Obviously, you can see the windsock. It's an airfield, it's a field. There's nothing really to look at. It'd be cool to come here when something was going on, but yeah, so this is basically what was here. So it's gated at the bottom, so you can't come up unless you're with the RC people. And then you're not allowed to drive past this point if you can come up here. But yeah, that's pretty cool. So I'm just going to go ahead, walk down to the bottom of this hill, and then we'll end the video off there, guys. Well, guys, we're back at the truck now. Um, that's it. That's what the fire road is. Um, I tried my best to explain everything I could. Um, I'll probably throw in some old footage I have that where I got on a map and tried to explain what was going on with that. Um, I think I have from when I filmed the first video. Um, other than that, 
Um, I apologize that it was so sporadic that I had to keep, you know, cutting um, in and out of the video. A lot more people out here than I thought there would be on a day like today. But, um, yeah, guys, I don't really like the film with random people just around, you know. I mean, there were no kids or anything, but still, just less people. Hey, what are you doing? But anyway, like I said, I got three more episodes of this I want to film. I think I might try to film the one on an even colder day when it's snowing, just so I know that there's no one that we're going to encounter. But um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I know this isn't really a video about any projects or anything, but I promise we're going to get back into that um, here pretty soon. Um, before mowing season starts, I want to get my final lawnmower that's sitting in the shop finished. That way I can get it back to its owner so they have something good to cut the grass with. And then from there, I want to start doing projects. I want to see if I can film some work on this truck here. Um, the, there's things I want to do to it, putting wheels on it, maybe putting um, exhaust on it. Um, I want to maybe put mirrors on it. I know I want to buy another vehicle, so maybe we could do some stuff with that. More mower content, more small engine content. I want to make a racing mower of some kind. So we'll see about that. As well as more exploring stuff, maybe more stuff talking about the day job at Honda and all kind of other things. So, like I said, thanks for watching this video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time here on the Mike Falapi YouTube channel. Take care.